हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल इंटीग्रेटेड फिजिक्स स्टडीज आईपीएस एस एम ऑलरेडी प्लस टू सेकेंड इयर सिलेबस कंप्लीट कर सारी एवं मुझे प्लस थ्री सी बी सी एस अनलाइन क्लासेस भिडियोज गुड़ा अपलोड करी जब भल लगे तेल लाइक करदेव और सब्सक्राइब करदेव जो भिडज गुड़ा मुझे अपलोड करी तार नोटिफिकेसन ये बेल आइकन को अल्रे सेट करदे गोटे इंपोर्टां जिनस भिडज जो थ्री डट्स देखु तार क्वाटी ये देख बै डिफल्ट थ्री सिक्सटी अच्छी तुम ताक पढ़े कर एडभांस क्लिक कर तुम रिजल्यूसन प्रति वीडियो जरे मु पीडीएफ लिंक देवी ताकु एटी ड्रॉप डाउन लिस्ट को तमे क्लिक करी डाउनलोड मध्य करी परबो पीडीएफ को लास्ट रे एटी जो मोर चैनल नेम अछि याकु क्लिक करी तमे एटी प्लेलिस्ट को जाई मु प्रति वीडियोस को यूनिट वाइज एज पर सिलेबस हो जाई कि रखेतिबी तमे सर्च करी परबो ओके थैंक यू हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आज नो टॉपिक रे हमें फोटोलिथोग्राफी विषय रे पढीबा सो द वर्ड लिथोग्राफी एक्चुअली कम्स फ्रॉम द ग्रीक वर्ड लिथोस which means stones and graphia which means to write okay thus literally lithography means writing on the stones now the word photo is used for light so in case of semiconductors the photo lithography is also called the optical lithography or uv lithography okay where uv means ultraviolet now photo lithography is the most used top down method okay it is a top down method in micro fabrication to pattern parts of a thin film or the bulk of a substrate okay and in this process silicon wafers here wafers means as you have eaten uh, wafers like chocolate wafers or creamy wafers okay that are available in market in wrappers so this is also something like that so in this process silicon wafers act as stones and the patterns are written with a light sensitive polymer which is called a photo resist in short pr or simply resist okay now computer generated masks are used to develop patterns on these silicon wafers okay a series of chemical treatments either engraves the exposure pattern into or enables deposition of a new material in the desired pattern upon the material below the photo resist okay now in complex integrated circuits that is ic a modern complementary metal oxide semiconductor that is in short cmos okay wafer undergoes photolithographic cycle up to 50 times or more okay and photolithography is similar to photography in that the pattern in the etching resist is created by exposing it to light either directly without using a mask or with a projected image using an optical mask okay now let us see what is the procedure actually adopted in this case of photolithography so in order to make silicon based devices selective diffusions can be made in silicon by opening the windows in a layer of silicon dioxide okay that is sio2 okay now it is grown on the surface of this silicon wafer and the process of photolithography for fabricating the semiconductor devices is illustrated in the figure okay and it consists of a series of steps okay and here most importantly extreme cleanliness is the essential requirement in this processing steps okay so let us first go to the figure okay this one so as you can see first we have to oxidize the silicon sample here we have taken n type silicon okay n type silicon means it is an extrinsic semiconductor doped with pentavalent impurity then over it we have sio2 layer now in the next point we have a layer of photo resist that is pr which is applied okay this is shown in the black color okay now in the third step the pr is exposed through a mask okay and this mask is actually called as your diffusion mask okay and uv light is exposed okay and this is the mask okay then in the fourth point unexposed pr is being removed okay removal of unexposed pr is done 
then we have the polymerized PR right here then in the next point HF each okay HF means hydrochloric okay hydrochloric each is used to remove the SiO2 in the window these are the window okay then in the next point remove the PR and diffuse boron through windows in the SiO2 layer okay so these are the diffused P regions right then aluminium is evaporated onto the surface for metallization purpose okay so this is your on the top we have aluminium then lastly using PR that is the photoresist and another mask B which is called the metallization mask okay we have to repeat the above steps from 2 to 4 okay so we have to that means we have again a layer of photoresist will be applied then PR will be exposed through the diffusion mask then unexposed PR will be removed okay so steps 2 to 4 are being repeated then we have to each away the aluminium except in the P contact areas okay so finally the silicon which is covered with SiO2 when you will view that from the top it will, it will look like this and these black dots are your aluminium okay so this is the total figure which is the procedure of this photolithography now let us see the procedure process point wise okay so first process is the oxidation and in the very first step we have to take a layer of silicon dioxide which is formed over the surface of silicon wafer by oxidation of silicon and the SiO2 will make possible the basic oxide masking okay so basic oxide masking process which is needed for silicon device fabrication and for this oxidation to occur the silicon wafers can be placed in a furnace which is containing the oxygen that is O2 gas in order to grow a silicon dioxide layer okay which is having a thickness less than 0.1 micrometer and this layer is grown on the surface now this SiO2 layer encapsulates the rich enclosed the wafer by silica glass which blocks the penetration by most impurity atoms right now a liquid or gaseous addition promoter such as BIS the rich trimethylsilyl amine is applied in order to promote the addition of the photoresist to the wafer okay now come to the second step applying the photoresist so here the wafer is covered with a photoresist by spin coating and the coating is a photosensitive organic material which is called your photoresist that is PR and it can be polymerized by UV light x-ray or an electron ion beam and in this process a viscous liquid solution of PR is dispensed onto the wafer and the wafer is rotated rapidly to produce a uniformly thick layer which is having thickness from 0.5 to 2.5 micrometer okay now let us go further so these are the steps which I have already explained now the third step is the exposure to the light okay and here light means generally we consider the UV light so here a diffusion mask is now placed over the wafer and UV light is then made to fall over the wafer surface and in this case the coating can be polymerized that is by application of polymer everywhere except where the pattern is to be appeared okay and the exposure to light causes a chemical change that allows unpolymerized areas of the photoresist to be removed by a special solution which is called developer okay and positive photoresist which is most commonly used becomes soluble in the developer when it will be exposed right then come to the fourth step it is your itching so here the process used for selectively removing the oxide involves covering the surface of the oxide with an acid resistant coating that is by applying the photoresist PR except where the diffusion windows are to be created so for this a hydrochloric that is HFH or a plasma enhanced H will remove the SiO2 
at the unquoted that is the window locations okay now in case of semiconductor fabrication dry itching that is plasma enhanced itching techniques are generally being used and these techniques can be made anisotropic in order to avoid significant undercutting of the photoresist pattern now again wet itch process are useful for MEMS that is micro electromechanical systems and they are generally isotropic in nature so remember dry itching is anisotropic and wet itching is isotropic in nature okay now come to the next step it is the removal of the photoresist now the polymerized photoresist is removed from the substrate and this is usually done by a liquid which is called resist stripper which chemically alters the resist so that it no longer adheres to the substrate okay and pr may also be removed by a plasma containing oxygen which oxidized it and this process is similar to your dry itching now the diffusion of impurities that is trivalent impurities suppose boron in this particular case through the windows in the SiO2 layer can take place and P type regions are then diffused into the original N type silicon substrate okay now a metal such as aluminum is evaporated over the surface of the wafer then using the photoresist that is PR metallization mask and steps for exposure to UV light and removal of PR as discussed above so the process is again repeated right and further the aluminium is eased away except from the P contact areas as shown in the figure that we have already discussed right then finally the individual devices can be separated by sewing that is cutting or by scribing or breaking the wafer okay then finally the individual devices are mounted in the appropriate packages and leads to connected to the aluminium contact regions so this is all about the procedure which is adopted for the photolithography now let us see what are the advantages then disadvantages then applications of this photolithography let us first discuss about the advantages so in the first point photolithography can create extremely small patterns which is down to few tens of nanometer in size then photolithography exercises exact control over the shape and size of the objects that it creates okay then it can create patterns over an entire surface in a cost effective manner so it is less costly and this is because photolithography can each a pattern into an IC that is integrated circuit with a single beam of UV light okay and for this it does not require any additional materials so this will make photolithography a highly efficient technique okay then the close tolerances which are available with this technique will make possible the integration of diffusion patterns which are necessary for silicon integrated circuits okay now come to the disadvantages in the first point it requires a completely flat substrate in order to produce effective patterns and it is not efficient at producing non-flat objects okay then in the next point it requires extremely clean conditions which should be void that is free from all the contaminants liquids and environmental hazards so cleanliness is very important in case of photolithography then come to the next point photolithography requires an ideal temperature conditions okay so it is not that it will work at any random temperature okay for this purpose an ideal temperature condition is required okay then generation of the mask is time consuming and it is also expensive right then nanostructures significantly smaller than 100 nanometer are difficult to produce due to diffraction effects as the wavelength of light used becomes comparable to the size of the structures and finally photolithographic technique is very expensive and cost million of dollars okay so all in all it will be costly 
okay then at the end let us see what are the applications photolithography is used to produce integrated circuits that is ICs and other internal computer parts then it can produce patterns on any small surface okay this process allows hundreds of chips which are to be simultaneously built on a single silicon wafer and it can be used to produce features as small as 50 nanometer okay so these are some of the applications now up to this i have taken photolithography from one book now this is what i have taken from another book but it has given photolithography in a very brief manner so you can also read it for your knowledge purpose and look out for the valuable points from here also and include it by combining all the points and make your note accordingly okay thank you